you all for bringing these to the right Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Good. Good. To be here. This is really great. Um, before I get started, though, uh, we have a, a special surprise speaker, I guess you could say. Um, we have also, who's come here today, we have Laura Ma and we have Glennis. I don't know your last name. Lee. Lee. That's easy enough, isn't it? And um, we've actually asked Laura if she would come up and just share a really quick testimony. Um, it's been really interesting being a part of the service today, and we've had No Longer Slaves sung, which is an amazing song. It's all about being a child of God. Um, we've had the kids up here talking about being disciples, and that's just great too, because everything, I think, has flowed into what I feel that the Lord has for me to share with you. And so Laura's gonna be a part of that as well. So Laura, if you just wanna come up and just share a few words, that'd be great. This is Laura. Thanks for uh, having us, guys. Uh, it's really um, like a um, like privilege to uh, be here to just like really enjoy the um, uh, worship time and whatever that was before. Like I, I really feel that um, this place, this family, is like really safe. Um, so although it's like really last minute and it's totally not rehearsed, but uh, I just trust that whatever I say, like um, the Holy Spirit will speak to you through whatever like you probably to share. Um, so I've known uh, Steve and Cheryl, we hang out for quite a bit, maybe over a year. <laughs> yeah, and then um, uh, I, a bit about my background, I uh, came from China um, when I was 18, 19 uh, for university here in Canada, and then um, stayed on like afterwards. So um, it was really hard at first. I came by myself as a visa student, so um, like no family and whatnot. So it was really hard at the very beginning uh, to kind of fit in, to you know, um, like live the life here, to study. But um, I was lucky enough, I was blessed enough to um, become a Christian uh, during my university years here um, in Waterloo. Um, and then um, it made it a, a bit easier, uh, uh, that transition into this life in Canada. Um, and then I didn't know, like I was Christian for a long time, um, but I didn't know that, uh, like, although I um, already kind of decided to accept Jesus and became a Christian, but a lot of um, the aspect of my life is still um, very heavily influenced by the Chinese culture that I uh, was born into and I'm, I'm I was raised in. So a lot of the, the cultural things in the culture is not very... Um, uh, like of God, like it's it's actually not uh, what God it is pleasing to God and what is not doesn't represent God's heart, um, and I guess um, God is um, really good, uh, like He could have like just left me like there, uh, not showing me all these things because you know being a Christian like it's enough to get you to heaven right like it it doesn't have to be all revealed. But uh, God is so good that uh, he, I guess, chose to reveal um, certain things that uh, really, uh, I guess, set me free from that ungodliness, um, un ungodliness in the, the Chinese culture. So I, I was never realized how much, I guess, um, uh, performance driven uh, the, uh, like the culture carries. Um, like, even though like you're a Christian, I was going to a Chinese church, um, it's a lot about like, uh, um, oh, you gotta read your Bible, you know, every day. You gotta like serve in the church. You gotta do this. You gotta uh, share the gospel with people. Like it's a lot of uh, like these are all great things. Like by no means I'm not like you know putting these things down. But um, like like somehow the the culture that the background kind of shift the focus and make it. Uh, as if like if you don't do this, then you know it's it's not good. So it put the focus on doing those things rather than um, like um, the relationship with God and really being touched by the love of God itself. So um, I really wasn't aware of it for the longest time until um, uh, gradually I realized how uh, like 
I really don't measure up in a lot of the things that I thought that I was supposed to do. Like, yes, you know, I try to read the Bible every day at the very beginning, but after a while, like, I just couldn't do it because, you know, like, if you do it from a legalistic uh, point of view, like, it's getting kind of boring afterwards and it sucks, like, out, life out of you. And then um, I really try to love my friends and bring them to Christ and all that kind of stuff. And then after a while, I realized that my love is really, really shallow. Like, once they became a Christian, I don't want to, like, hang out with them anymore or something like that because mission is accomplished. Like, it's, it's just not right after, you know, the Spirit starts to review these things to me that, you know, it, like, it's really not enough. You think that you are doing these stuff uh, that you're supposed to do, but, like, it, it's really not enough. Uh, to a point where, like, I was really uh, disappointed in myself uh, because I just couldn't um, kind of do all that the law is like required of me, um, and I just couldn't love, I, I don't have that, uh, that genuine um, uh, spirit, genuine love in me, and then uh, it was during this time, like the like very struggling time, that um, God really um, showed up to me in various ways, I guess I, I won't go, go into like really detail, but um, one thing that really struck me and like was revealed to me um, like it was during uh, uh, like a Sunday service one day in my uh, previous church back then. Uh, like, like so growing up, like my parents always say this, and I never ever question it. Although now, I, if I say it, it, it must sound really wrong. But like they always say that, oh, you know, like if you don't do this, we won't love you anymore. Okay, you ju just do it, just do it. If you don't do this, we won't love you anymore. Um, I never questioned it. Um, until that Sunday, like uh, when the Spirit really speaks through the pastor that was preaching that day, pastor was sharing how like parenting should be, and how certain parents like talk to their kids like that. They said that, oh, you know, if you don't do this, then we won't love you. Um, and then just during that sermon, during that preaching, as the pastor was like sharing that, it struck me so hard, and I realized that this saying that my parents used to say. It hurts, like it really hurts. And tears start to come to me, and um, I start to realize I how I long for um, the love of God that is not based on uh, what I do or what I don't do. And then so, um, like not too long after that, I've been still praying just to experience the love of God myself so that I can you know, do all these things that I should do out of love rather than out of responsibility. So lo and behold, like a couple of weeks or so like afterwards, um, also like during worship time again, um, we were all praying and then we were all asked to uh, ask God to show us um, how he loves us, uh, which is something that I was really desperately like wanting to know. And then uh, during that time, during our worship, like, uh, like God revealed himself to me and revealed his love to me in, in an amazing way. Like I, I just couldn't believe like what was happening, what, what I was seeing. I see him like looking at me full of love in his eyes and just like squeezing my heart, you know, like, um, and uh, like, but still at that moment, like it, it still doesn't make sense because like, I guess that mindset when you were growing up, you were so used to that mindset, it's really hard to shift. Like, I have friends around me praying together with me as well, and they're like, so yeah, we sense that God is speaking to you, so like, well, what is it? Like, we, we sense something too. And I told them what I sense, you know, God's love is upon me, and I really felt that he, he loves me. But I kind of tell my friends at that time that I don't know why he loves me. Like, it just really doesn't make sense given how um, poor and how lowly and how, how much I don't measure up. Um, and then, so my friends said, okay, so let's just pray together. Let's ask God together and see what he said to us, uh, why he, he loves you. So, like, there are three of us, so the three of us pray together. And then, um, like, again, very surprising to me, like, we all got the same answer. Like, I just saw that, like, uh, like God is showing me, like, I'm like a little girl, like, jumping around, like, really cute, not doing anything, just, like, playing by herself. And um, so I was like, yeah, I think 
Bob thinks I'm cute. That's why he loves me. <laughs> and my friend is like, yeah, 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 we got this. So some, like, this, all the three of us got like similar things. But even that, like, it's really mind blowing because, you know, God actually loves me, not because of whatever I do or don't do or whether I measure up or not, just because like he really find me cute and I don't even need to do a thing to to you know win his love in any way. So like. Like it's like revelation, like just become deepened like throughout the years. It's not like a one day thing. But as I grow to learn more and more about his love, um, it's so unconditional like that. It's nothing like, you know, if you don't do this, we won't love you, that kind of thing. Although my parents don't love me that way. They're just saying it. They, like just recently I found out. They were just saying it so that they can get me to do stuff. It's, it's not their heart, okay? But um, like I like by knowing that unconditional love of God, it really helps me to to I guess live freely and to receive more of His love and in a way to fulfill a lot of the uh, commandment that the law requires as well. Not because I force myself to do it, simply because you know like God's life is in me and His love is in me to drive me to compel me. So yeah, yay God. I've spoken at church since I got my new glasses and I forgot them. So I'm just been it. Um, I was praying earlier and I feel I have some words for a few people. So let's just ask Holy Spirit to come and pour out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Pour out over this room. Pour out over your children. Pour out over us, Lord. Your goodness, your kindness, your grace, your beauty, your honor, your mystery. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, I ask that you would come and encourage us today. What would you like to say? I feel like the Lord is saying that there are hidden gems in this church. There are hidden gems. And I just want to pray for you that God would, in his timing and by his way, would, would reveal you. And not reveal you um, in a, an embarrassing way or a shameful way, but that he would reveal you because he wants to declare publicly how much he loves you. So, Lord, I ask that you reveal the hidden gems that are in this church, the hidden gems that you have, who may be a little bit nervous to share, who may be a little bit not confused, maybe not understanding what it is that you are saying through them. Lord, I just ask, Father God, that you would just come and pour out into each and every one of those hidden gems. Because I feel like the Lord's been speaking to you about things and you've been nervous to maybe bring it to leadership's attention or bring it to the person that you've been praying for and afraid of being wrong or afraid of what they might think of you or afraid of um, even what the Lord is saying. And I just say no, no fear in Jesus' name. Just like the song says, we are no longer slaves to fear. We are children of God. And so I just bless you to be free to share as the Lord leads you to share. I bless you to come forward and be seen because the Lord wants to declare publicly how much he loves you. And that's a powerful, freeing thing. So I don't know who it is, but I just pray, God, that you, that you would just pour out over them and this church. Because it's the gems in this church. It's not only just the hidden ones, it's the ones that are already seen. You are crown, like you are crowning jewels. You are jewels in the crown of the Lord, and you need to be seen. And I feel like as um, people are raised up and, and, and they're raised up in freedom for what the Lord has, that um, 
wow, that the Lord is setting up a light that it's almost like that the jewels in the crown, as the light hits those jewels, they're going to reflect it back into the community around you and into your families. And there is going to be massive stuff that's going to happen. And I think that things are going to break through like crazy. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Just come pour out, Lord. Just pour out, Father. Is there a young person here who is interested in the medical field at all? Is there anybody here who's a doctor or thinking about becoming a doctor? No? About a nurse? Anybody in the medical field? Dental? Yeah? Okay, can you stand up? Actually, come here and just you know, touch you. Reach out and touch someone. Okay. So, um, Father, I just pray, Lord, for this young woman, God, that you would bless her with innovation, that you would bless her heart, Lord. I thank you, Father God, because there's a zest in her for life. You have blessed her to just love life. She enjoys the sunshine. She enjoys, wow, you enjoy the simple things. That's so cool, because some people can be really complicated, but you really enjoy the simple things. So, Lord, thank you for that. Thank you that you really enjoy God's nature. You really enjoy, you enjoy the things that are simple, that, he, that just contain him. And I feel like the Lord's going to bless you as you pursue the medical field, that the life that he has placed in you, that's going to be used big time. And that's, that's really interesting because we've been really praying, haven't we, Cheryl, for the medical stuff that's going on in hospitals and so on and so forth. And the, those hospitals need people that are full of life and love life because you need to be life in the hallways of hospitals, dental clinics, wherever it is that you're going to go. And so I just bless you in Jesus' name to just continue loving life. And that's part of who he's created you to be. You carry that. So even in situations that he places you in, you bring that life. Just let it flow. Just let it flow. It's nothing you have to do. Just let it flow. Just let it flow. And point out to people, wow, look, there's a rainbow. Wow, look, this is happening. Wow, what a gorgeous sunset. God painted that just for me. I say every year in the autumn time that God paints the trees just for me. So claim that as yours because he knows that you enjoy it and really walk forth in it. So I bless you to just Amen. be the life that God has created in you and to just share it with others, especially as he brings you forth in whatever medical field that he's called you to. Amen. So bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's see. Um, this gentleman right here with the glasses, you were up here earlier. Yes, you. Can you come up for a sec? It's funny. I was, when I was praying, I got a picture of you with great big, huge cowboy boots on. <laughs> turn around. I just want to turn around. Great. And so I thought, okay, I'm just going to open my eyes to see if he was actually wearing boots. And I was like, okay. Those are close. <laughs> um, but I could see you walking through the church, and the weapon that the Lord has given you for his kingdom is friendliness. Amen. Hallelujah. Like absolute friendliness. And you just talk to who you feel led to talk to. You know, like when you're out and about, you just talk to people. And it's your friendliness that will draw people into God's heart, draw them into his kingdom. And, I, like, I can hear people as they're giving testimony saying, well, I met this man, and he was so friendly to me, and he just shared with me, and, you know, like, so you're going to have a lot of fruit. So I bless that in you. Lots of fruit. Amen. Lots of fruit in Jesus' name. Lots of fruit. Lots of fruit, Lord. Lots of fruit. Lots of fruit. That's funny, because you're tall, but he's going to be taking you to low-hanging fruit, so... <laughs> It's like the people who have been questioning for years and all of a sudden something happens and you're going to be in the right place at the right time and with the right words and with that right heart and that friendliness and they're just going to be, boom, right into your hands. You're not going to have to do anything. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, Lord, thank you for low-hanging fruit and just bless him and his friendliness in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I ask that you protect it, God, that you protect it because it's a threat. 
to the enemy, and I ask that you protect it, Lord, and that um, that you would create relationships in this man's life, God, that um, just bring forth much fruit. It, it's like it's almost like as you are friendly and people are drawn to you, that friendliness gift will pass on to them. Amen. Yeah. And, Lord, let the relationships around him, the good friends that you have for him, Lord, let them war for him. Let them see, God, that as you're using him, that it's it's almost like um, I feel like the Lord's going to bring be bringing lots of Jonathans. Amen. Lots of Jonathans. I see at least two of them, one on either side of you. Amen. So just raise them up, God. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, you got a great heart. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on a second. Kim's got something. Yeah, I just we do this a lot. We team up. We're like two superheroes, no sidekicks, you know? I, I just have a sense about your feet when she said the cowboy boots. Um, and with the friendliness, it will take you into a lot of territory that other Amen. people won't be able to Amen. go. So I want to I wanna bless your feet to take territory. Amen. So, Amen. Uh, this, this is part of your weapon. These are part of your weapon. So, Lord, I just want to bless his feet. Love to um, go and expand territory Amen. where, where he walks, yeah. let the let the ground rumble. Yes. Father, he's a he's kind of a hidden weapon in that he's so friendly that they don't see the big boots coming. And so, Lord, let him trample the scorpions and the lions. Let him uh, demons uh, actually scream when he walks in the room. Amen. Lord, I pray for these cowboy boots. Cowboy boots have a point to them, and they're good for kicking. So. <laughs> My, one of my favorite things to do is to kick the enemy. And so I pray right now for an anointing on your feet Amen. to stomp on the ground and to cause the kingdom to come. To kick the enemy out of the way, to be able to um, pull down his plans and purposes over people's lives. And Father, I pray right now that you would equip these feet with big boots, Lord. And Father, let them take much territory, Lord. And Father, I just ask for the authority um, that you would place the authority in him. That he would understand the authority he carries in you, Jesus. Because you are part of him, he carries mighty authority. And Lord, give him a revelation of that, Father. And that he will rise up as the warrior that you created him to be in the times that you need him. But, Lord, let him also have those big arms of comfort and that love in his heart for those that no one else will touch. Lord, I pray that he would go after the untouchables. Lord, that he would be a man who would go after the untouchables. And that he would bring the kingdom into their lives. Lord, I thank you for this young man and I bless him destiny, plans, and purposes in his life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Feel the Lord is saying you're a mighty man of God. You're a mighty man of God. And, uh, and while you are a servant, I believe that there's a mindset shift that you're a mighty man of God. And Father, I bless this man as a servant and as a mighty man of God. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you pour out in mighty ways that he would move in signs, wonders, and miracles. That he would see great and mighty things happen as he serves, as he's, as, as he, as he's a friend. That he would see mighty things. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, I have a couple more, but time is a factor. And um, we're going to, just so you know, we are going to be praying for people at the end. So I will grab those two people and make sure that they get their words too. Wow. Okay. So I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> so let me just tell you a little bit about myself and I'll, I'll be really, really quick. Um, my name is Helen and in my family I am known as the cute one. <laughs> And the reason why I'm known as the cute one is because I'm the youngest. <laughs> and so I dubbed myself the cute one. And uh, used to say to my brothers and sisters all the time, you have to listen to me. I am the cute one. <laughs> and so um, I have friends who have supported me in my campaign. And now my family absolutely does say, yeah, we know you're the cute one. 
so um, I have a brother and two sisters, and they're all way older than I am. My parents immigrated to Canada in 1950, and, or 1957, sorry. Um, and then I was born 10 years later. So drastic, huge age difference between me and my siblings. Um, I, my background is all Scottish and Welsh, British. So I have an interesting kind of cultural mix happening. Um, there are things that I do say, eat, with that some people will go, oh my gosh, at. But that's okay, it's part of my culture, it's part of who I am. Um, I became a Christian when I was 19 years of age, and promptly, uh, three years later, went to Bible college, became a pastor, and I pastored uh, professionally in uh, two churches for almost four years, and then I left for Hong Kong, and lived in Hong Kong for almost five years as a missionary, established a, a youth ministry over there. We did missions trips, we did all kinds of things. It was kind of a unique experience because I worked with the local Chinese church. And so there I was, this short little white woman who had 40 Chinese kids following her. Sometimes I felt like Mrs. Partridge of the Partridge family. We'd be walking along and they'd all be behind me. So, um, but we had an absolutely amazing time. I think it was a really, really neat mix because things that I would do with a Western group, we did with them and they absolutely loved it. So I was like, yeah, I'm the best youth pastor in the whole wide world. Um, and that was a great, great time as well. And um, I've continued my missions tour of things. As VJ was saying, um, the Lord really has taken me all around the world. I'm actually just planning an, another trip. We're heading off to Turkey uh, in Germany for uh, just after uh, Christmas, I'm going to be in Turkey for New Year's. And basically what I do, um, to put it in a nutshell, a lot of our trips involve providing uh, pastoral care, prayer ministry, strategic development, um, care concern just for full-time missionaries on the field. So it's actually we go to them and we spend time with them we don't take away from what they're doing. We go and we join them for drives, and lots of stuff has happened on drives. Lots of stuff has happened over coffee. Lots of stuff has happened over just having a quick meal. So uh, that's part of, of what I do um, as who I am. Job-wise, I'll tell you a little bit. My first job ever, I had to think about this. My first job ever, I managed an arcade at a water slide park when I was 15. I earned four dollars an hour and uh, but the best part about that job was I got to choose the music that was played in the arcade so that was pretty good good perk. Um, and I've worked in daycare, I have taught kindergarten, um, I have even been most recently, and I love this job title, an international drug dealer. And I know that's like, whoa, but I actually worked for a charitable organization that received donated pharmaceuticals. And what my job was, was to make those pharmaceuticals available for bigger organizations like World Vision, Compassion Canada, Plan Canada, and I would put great big huge containers of medicines together to be shipped into the developing world. So my nieces and nephews, who are not much younger than I am, used to love introducing their aunt as the international drug dealer. <laughs> so I'm kind of sad I've lost that title because I, I quit that job at the beginning of the year. Um, I am a person who absolutely does not like tomatoes, so don't give me anything tomato. No, don't like tomatoes at all. Um, I have some hidden talents. I can speak in all different kinds of accents. And I most recently learned one of the ones that I couldn't do, but because I went and stayed there, I now have mastered it, and that's the Australian accent, so I love that too. And another hidden talent that I have is that I can touch the tip of my nose with the tip of my tongue. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, part of the reason why I started off by sharing all that stuff about me, which you really, really don't need to know, is I just want you to understand that I have an identity. I have a cultural identity. I have a heritage identity. Um, I have a story about how God's changed my life. I know what I'm capable of, and I know about all my life experiences and how they've affected me. 
Like, there's different things throughout my life that have made me, me, made me who I am. But at the core of all of that, and the thing that I have to remember the most, that all of us actually need to remember the most, is that you are either a son or a daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Bottom line. Everything out of that identity, that's your core identity, everything out of that identity is what flows. God has used different things that I have faced in my life to be the daughter that I am in his kingdom. I have authority in territory in his kingdom because of life experience, because of some of the things that I've gone through, because of some of the great memories that I have, because of my heritage, because of my cultural background. It, there's no mistake that you are here right now on this earth at this time. There's no mistake about that. And there's absolutely no mistake that he has made you a man or a woman. You either are a son or a daughter. God's word says so. And if you want to open your Bibles, do you have your Bibles? Open your Bibles to 1 John chapter 3. I have two versions uh, that I brought with me just because I love the differences of, of what they say. So I'm going to read out of the NIV first. So 1 John chapter 3 says, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us. Oh my goodness, I'm doing this without my glasses. Drop them up here and I'm not using them. Oh, that's better. I can see things now. So, I'll start again. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. Proof. Hello. Proof. Children. Son or daughter. Son or daughter. Yeehaw. It's right there. Okay? And that is what we are. So, does that make it a dream? Or does that make it fact? It's a fact. fact. It's a fact. Right now in this world, a lot of facts are under Back. fire. A lot of facts are being torn apart. A lot of truth is being torn apart. So this is a fact. You are a son or a daughter. Okay? Of the king of kings or the lord of lords. The reason the world did not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we, will, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. And in the Passion Translation, it says, Look with wonder at the depth of of the Father's marvelous love that he has lavished on us. He has called us and made us his very own beloved children. The reason the world doesn't recognize who we are is that they didn't recognize him. Beloved, we are God's children right now. However, it's not yet apparent what we will become. But we do know that when it is finally made visible, we will be just like him. For we will see him as he truly is, and all who focus their hope on him will always be purifying, be purifying themselves, just as Jesus is pure. We are either a son or a daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The other fact that is in this portion of scripture is that we are loved, loved, lavishly, extravagantly, like, I'm sure that if God had plastic love, he would put us in a bubble. Like, that's how much he wants to surround us and love on us. And young people today, Cheryl, I think you prayed this earlier before the service. We were praying hope for young people. Hope. Need hope. 
So I look at what's happening in the world today and I get really, really concerned. There's lots of confusion out there. There's lots of things going on. And you know, very, very different, I'm gonna say this. I'm leaving my youth behind, I think, in saying this, but it was very different in my day. Very different. The things that young people have to face today, the incredible evil that's out there that they have to face. You guys need to know that you are a son or a daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You have to know that. Because there are things that you are going to face that I'm not going to. Even the little ones, the younger ones that were up here, the things they're going to face are going to be drastically different. And so part of what we have to do as an older generation is we have to equip the younger generation. And I try my hardest because that's part of who he has created me to be. He has created me to be an encourager. He's, in create, he's created me to be a cheerleader. I stand behind young people and I cheer you on. I don't care where you're from because I know what he is calling you to. I know that he, as he raises you up, you are going to have access to resources. Like you're going to have that knowledge. It'll take me a while to figure out, wow, I have access to some amazing resources. For you guys, it's going to be like that. You're going to know. Because the older ones have gone ahead of you and have, were turning around and saying, do you realize that you have this and you have this and you have this and you have this? Young people, you've got to grab a hold of it. He loves you. You are loved outrageously. You are loved lavishly. You are, you are a son or a daughter of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. When this truth first started hitting me, and I've been a Christian for a long time, before this truth really hit me. It was the core of healing that started to happen in my mind, heart, and spirit. You know, Romans 12, 2 talks about putting on the mind of Christ. I think probably every time Jesus tried to put the mind of Christ on me, I, I went like this. <laughs> oh, woe is me. Nobody loves me. Uh, what am I going to do with my life? And I have no hope. And, uh. and Jesus is like, here, let me just show you a little different how I see things. Oh no, woe is me, blah, blah, blah. Seriously. It took me a long time to understand how much he loves me, how much he has protected me, how much my life is valued by him. You know, I mentioned earlier that my parents, they were older when they had me. There was a great big, huge controversy around my birth. Seriously, my mom, she was like, no, I'm 42 years of age. There's more, you know, chance that she's going to have some sort of debilitating disease or, you know, deformity. And, you know, we've got plans and we've got this and we've got that. My father, he stepped in and said, this is our child. This baby, we're going to have this baby. There are things that have happened in my life that I know. I absolutely know beyond a shadow of a doubt it's only been God. Really, it's only been God. So I just want to really, really encourage you. There is a destiny plan and purpose for you. If you press into your identity as a daughter or a son, of King of Kings, Lord of Lords. I'm repeating it, repeating it, repeating it, repeating it, repeating it, because it's truth. You grab a hold of that, nothing, absolutely nothing. Part of grabbing that truth, the mind of Christ goes on top, because it's true. The more that you agree with truth, the more the mind of Christ stays on there. The more it stays, the more ground it can take, the more things you can do, the innovation, the creativity, the things that God has placed in you, the more those things can be called forward. The places you will go, the things that you will see, the things that you will do, the lies that you will defeat. Younger generation, hear me now. Part of my job also is to rally up the troops. 
You've got what it takes. Don't listen to the crap that the world's trying to tell you. Seriously. Because truth is, you are a son or a daughter. Amen. You've got a big, 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 big father in heaven, let me tell you. Does anybody here know who Jackie Polinger is? Nobody knows? Well, yeah. Okay. Jackie Polinger is a lady who has just actually, I think, 10 months ago celebrated her 40th anniversary in Hong Kong. This lady is from the UK. She ended up in Hong Kong, I think, through having a vacation time, and she noticed all the drug dealing that was taking place. And so she decided that she was going to take territory. And the first few years of her time in Hong Kong were hard, really, really, really hard. Drug lords were threatening her. There was all kinds of stuff happening. She was praying, she was totally scared to death. And then she got called by two drug lords for a meeting. So she's like, Lord, am I supposed to go? Yep, and they told her, don't you dare bring anybody with you. She walked into this meeting, and I'm gonna say right now, I may get some of the details wrong, but she walked into this meeting. The two of them were sitting at that end of the table, and she sat down. She said that halfway through, because they asked her, why are you here? Halfway through, she started to speak about what, how she really wanted to you know, reach into the community and, and help those that were addicted, and you know, so on and so forth. As she started to share her vision, the two men, their faces, totally changed. Instead of sitting, you know, like, they all of a sudden were like, they sat up straighter and they sat up taller. And she just continued on. She had no idea what was happening. And she, she just kind of was like, um, so that's why I'm here. And they were like, sure, okay, that's great, no problem. We don't want any trouble with you. That's great. You know what? We're even going to see whether or not we can help you out a little bit. Would you like that? Would that be okay? She was just like, okay, sure. Um, yeah, we're, we're good. Okay, yeah, you can go now. Thanks. She walked out of that room totally like, what in the world? And I think it was later on that she ran into one of those guys, you know, after bringing him to Jesus and seeing change in his life. And she mentioned that to him, and he said, well, he said, we were totally scared of you, especially considering that there were two great big, two huge guys standing right behind you. She's, and he was like, we've never seen muscles on anybody like that. <laughs> she stepped out knowing what she, who she was as a daughter into something that was totally, oh my goodness, but I can tell you that many, many wonderful breakthroughs, many, many wonderful promises that Jackie had from the Lord have been fulfilled. She got land from the government. She got buildings given to her. There have been major people who have come out of the drug scene because of this woman. And it all stems from understanding that she is a daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. So, with that birth certificate comes the destiny, plan, and purpose. And that's not for me to know. That's not for Kim, Steve, and Cheryl. It's not for even Sreik and BJ. It's not for them to know. That's for you and the Lord to find out. That's for you to come to him and say, so, God, what you got for me? What do you have? I'm, I'm ready. Let's, let's do this. Now, I'm just going to really be really quick and just talk about some practical aspects of this because then we want to pray for you. We want to call out the things that the Lord has for you. You know, my job up here is to just encourage you to let you know some truth. It's the Lord's job. It's the Holy Spirit's job to bring forth the things that he has for you. And like I was saying, put that mind of Christ on you so that you can see exactly what he sees. So we're going to, in partnership and in agreement with him, we're going to do that. We're going to pray for you. But just really quick, younger generation, 
some practical things that you want to do because for some reason, we as humans, we feel that we need to do. We, we, we need to do. Okay? Some pra really, really simple things. Number one, get to know Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8 talks all about Holy Spirit. So if you want to start with a really, really good place to learn more about him, Romans 8 is great. Okay? Get to know Holy Spirit. And it's not just in word. It's in your prayer time. Ask him questions. Do you know that he loves to share things that are personal with you? He loves to show you things that are amazing. You can ask him questions and he will provide answers. So talk to him. Get to know him. He's not just way out there. I mean, Jesus said there is one that's coming that's going to lead you after I'm gone. It's Holy Spirit. Look at the drastic difference that happened with the disciples. Once they got hit by the Spirit, holy mutt, <laughs> couldn't keep them down. They were, they were going, they, they knew. Sons of the King of Kings just took off because of Holy Spirit. So get to know Holy Spirit. Number two, pray about maybe asking somebody to be a mentor or to disciple you really well. If there's questions that you have, like, we love leadership. Leadership's amazing, but they're people. They have finite time and finite ways of being able to get together with you. So if there's someone in the church that you can see who really knows Holy Spirit, walk up to them and say, could we have a cup of coffee and, you know, maybe talk about some things? I have some questions. Mentoring is really amazing. It's one of my favorite things to do. So really seek out somebody who can either mentor or disciple you in a great way. Third thing, if there's opportunity to go hear some really great speakers, or if there's a conference, or you're wondering about something, and you get wind of you know, somebody coming through, go see them. You know, go and spend time. There are amazing people out there, and they've got great things to share. But the last thing, which I think, aside from the Holy Spirit, is really, really important. Pray for each other. Share with each other. We're body. You know, I just read it. We're family. You know, when I travel the world, I talk about you guys. Did you know that? I talk about family back home. Now, I may not know you personally, but God's word says that we're family, so that makes us brothers and sisters. Amen. So we need to love each other, bear each other's burdens, and part of that is sharing with each other. If God shares something amazing with you, find somebody and tell them about it. Pray into it. What do you think this is about? Well, maybe it means this. Okay, let's see. Being a son or a daughter can be really, really exciting. You just gotta press in. So I'm going to invite my little team <laughs> to come up. And I'm just, at this point, I just want anybody who's between the ages of, well, the younger ones aren't here, but anybody between the ages of 12 and 30 to stand. Okay, good. Now I know who you are. You guys should be the first ones up here. No. <laughs> no, true. Seriously. Um, I'm just going to pray a quick blessing on you, and then we're going to just open up this front. Just come forward, and we're going to pray for you. And, you know, if you want that, we're going to encourage you. It's part of our job. If you have a question, ask. If you need a hug, arms are rolling. I give great squishes. Okay, so I just want to pray for you guys. Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, for this younger generation. I want to thank you, Father, that you have amazing things for them. And that, Lord, as, as they go forward, as they start to live out being a son or a daughter, God, that you have amazing things to show them and teach them. Lord, I ask that you stir up their wonder. I ask that you stir up the awe, the, the awe factor in their hearts, God. 
I ask that you stir up hunger. I ask, Father God, that as Holy Spirit just touches them, Lord, things that um, may be stopping them from being who they've been created to be, Lord, would just fall off of them in Jesus' name. I ask for zest. I ask for zeal. I ask for um, amazing stories and testimonies, God. I ask, Father, that you would just provide everything that they need. Equip them well. Love them well. Provide well, Lord. Father, I thank you for the young people of this church, God. Some of them are hidden gems, and again, I call you forward in Jesus' name. Lord, I just want to say you have freedom, Lord, to do what you need to do here. I pray for the mind of Christ to just fall upon each and every person, and that, God, you would give them your perspective, that they would see things as you see things. Most importantly, that you would show them who they are. Thank you, God. Just bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. So come forward.